Hello everybody, this is Dave Anderson from Exact Engineering and I wanted to uh, show you guys a little project I had recently where I machined this dome you see here out of 17.4 stainless steel. It's about 7 inches in diameter with a spherical radius on it. And the back side has um, a flat on it, you can see, but it also has a hex machined into it. And then the center of the hex is a 5 8 18 or I think 5 8 or 5 8 tapped hole, I forget the thread. And uh, one of the challenges I had when I was presented with this project is how am I actually going to hold this thing? And you know what processes am I going to use to make it? What I ended up doing is I decided to um, machine a cylinder and put a hex, a matching hex that fits over the one you see there and then bolt it on. Now here's a piece of stock that I started out with. This is a piece of 17.4. It weighs about, I don't know, 120 pounds or something like that. And um, I had to uh, saw this on my saw, which was a challenge in itself. A challenge in itself. Uh, my saw is definitely not made to cut a piece this big. However, um, it's actually been a very good saw. I've been really happy with it. And uh, I got about a third of the way through this thing, and then the blade broke. And it was the original blade that came with the saw, which I bought. I've had it for three years, so it doesn't owe me anything. And um, so I had a second blade I bought that, um, from uh, bandsaw.com, which I really like. I mean, they, they've been a great, great supplier. And then this band, this blade, like, broke immediately. And then I was stuck with what am I going to cut it with because I didn't have any left any more blades, so I ended up putting a fine pitch blade and it took like three hours to cut, but it finally got through it. Uh, next thing was, is I had to figure out how I was gonna hold it, so I, uh, <clears throat> when I was gonna machine this thing, I ended up um, setting up uh, on some machinable jaws. Here I'm just probing them. Uh, it's all sped up, so you don't have to watch the uh, probing. And anyhow, um, so there, there I've cut the jaws and I'm gonna drop this plate in or this I'm sorry the cylinder in and go ahead and start machining uh, but first I'm going to probe the top of it and then the sides to get the actual center of this um, this cylinder I then program the back side so I'm going to machine the back side off machine the hex and drill and tap the 5 8 and uh, so I programmed that all in Fusion 360 sent it over to the Herco and was able to simulate it right on the machine which is a really great feature being able to simulate your G-code as G-code versus simulating it in the CAM program, which is not the same thing. Uh, the ML I used was a three-quarter inch, uh, four-flute, A-L-T-I-N coated solid carbide. It's an AccuPro, which is a, you know, MSC sort of house brand, but uh, they're pretty good value. Um, here I am uh, starting my first cut. And it's um, always interesting running your first cut into something this big and um, expensive. But so I sort of ease into it. Just uh, I, I did I did uh, preview the program in the cam and on the Herco. And so now I'm just going to walk walk it up to um, eventually the final speed, which is going to be around 100 inches a minute. I'm running at 3,000 RPM right now, and. Uh, We'll go ahead and let it go and uh, do its thing. And here's the finished part. Uh, you can see the hex is machined in there. There's also a radius machined on the corners of the hex, which is used to locate it with the fixture that I made. Uh, I don't have video of that, but I will show you that next. This is this hex matches this hex. It's fairly close. It's not super tight. And, um, uh, and then I'm gonna bolt it on using the 5 8 18 is in there so it's on there and 
Now I'm going to be turning this on my lathe and holding on this diameter. So I'm going to wind it tight against the flat and then we'll go ahead and snug it up. Ended up having to buy a new Allen wrench because I didn't have, have a half inch size. So, so there's the beast right there. And then we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and tighten this up nice and tight. Put it in a vise on the mill and clamp it and I'll get that super tight. And uh, I think it'll stall the machine before that thing spins on here, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> the issue I had was is all I have is this S-type holders for my lathe. Um, these are just the, the, screw, the screw type holders. And um, these inserts, you know, uh, these were fairly cheap, low quality inserts. This is a Shards. We can get these things pretty inexpensively. If you're turning aluminum and uh, maybe some light steel work, I found them to be adequate. Matter of fact, I actually turned some in bar with this one. Uh, we turned a bunch of in bar. Uh, I don't know if you've ever machined in bar before, but it's pretty tough material. However, we were able to um, purchase the uh, free machining in bar, which is uh, like machining 303 on most. It actually machines very nicely. So I ordered some new holders, and these are them from Kenna Metal. And these are the CNMG holders. And I. Uh, wanted a holder that had negative rake and something that also was clamping with a screw and a clamp as well just for rigidity so there's a new holder right there and uh, this is a right-handed holder MCLNR 124B is the part number and then the inserts I bought See, I bought two. I bought a, I bought a left and a right, so I can um, use one to set up for facing. So here's the left. And I was surprised that these aren't really weren't that expensive. Um, I purchased these through MSC and discounted. I think they were like 66 bucks a piece. So that's a pretty good deal for a hardened steel, well, I guess it's probably case hardened steel uh, part that's been precision machined. It's got this um, carbide seat sitting on it and clamp. Anyhow, I thought that was a pretty good deal. So the inserts I bought, um, I went two different ways. I bought the cheap ones just to see how they were gonna perform. And that's what these are. These are Pertel. And I'm not sure if this is a MSC brand if it's their own brand, but um, here's, here you can see that's the insert right there. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be an aggressive chip breaker, but that's what I want. I don't want the long stringy chips. And then the other type I bought was um, from Kenna Metal. And it is a, uh, this one looked like it was gonna be a better chip Wow, it's, where'd it go? Okay, I bought two of these. So you can see the difference. It just looks like it's gonna break the chip better. So we'll see. So I ended up using my six jaw chuck for this and uh, but I had to flip the jaws around because I certainly could not hold it um, by opening these jaws all the way up. It would not grab that large seven inch diameter uh, part. And uh, <clears throat> this is actually a really nice chuck. I, I, it's, a, it's a buck chuck and I bought it brand new when I bought the lathe. And um, that thing is staying with me. <laughs> it's a D16 and uh, really happy with that chuck. But um, anyways, here you see I've got it chucked up in the lathe. And I'm going to go ahead and just check the run out on the machine surface just to make sure that it's sitting uh, true to the to the lathe itself. And I think I'm getting about a foul run out and that's not bad. It's just resting on the chuck jaws and I didn't really spend much time, you know, tapping it in. So that's good enough for what we're doing here. Here I am. I'm measuring the diameter and setting up the tools. Uh, this is a ProTrack 
lathe and it's actually pretty easy to program. It's got some weird nuances. I just wish they would just stick to typical G code and quit trying to make stuff up on their own because it's really not that helpful in the end. Here is a dome that I'm programming and this is on the prototrack lathe and it's all conversational. You can read in G code. Uh, the drawback to reading in G code is it converts a G code to events, which you see here is that I'm creating. Uh, I guess the plus is you can actually edit the events right on the machine versus having to repost again, but I don't think it's really that helpful in the, in the long run, on especially on a complicated part. But this is a pretty simple part, and it's pretty easy to generate the geometry. You just go point to point, and uh, it's it's okay. Uh, the tool setup on this thing is a little funky. Um, it's sort of, uh, they try to make it easier, but I think in the end they made it harder because it really doesn't, it doesn't really seem to, um, meet up with any sort of typical tool setup that you would use on, um, on, on a typical machine. Like it wants you to touch the drill off on the radius, which I, I don't understand, but anyways. So here we go, uh, programming this thing through and, uh, Eventually, I'll get the profile set up, and then we'll be able to check in on the machine and look at the tool path and make sure that that looks right, and then we'll go ahead and um, run it. Here we are taking our facing passes. Uh, as I mentioned, <coughs> earlier maybe I don't maybe I didn't but you can actually face and profile with the CNMG insert which is a huge advantage now the other style of the inserts I was using I think they had a 55 degree included angle and um, those you really can't face much off with if you go beyond the nose radius you're going to bury the tool and you'd be cutting on both sides and that's not a good situation to be in so it's really nice to be able to face with the tool as well as profile with the same one. Here you can see I'm getting really nice chips coming off this thing. I mean, I'm happy with these things breaking up like that. It's not a very aggressive pass, uh, but it's enough to get the chips to break. And um, later on in the video, you'll see I had some trouble with actually stalling the machine. I was really surprised. I mean, this is a seven and a half horsepower lathe, but my guess is that the low RPMs I was running this at, there's not a lot of torque down there. But uh, anyways, so we'll go ahead and let this thing run through. I actually have sped up the video um, for it so you don't have to watch the whole thing in real time. And uh, <clears throat> enjoy. Yeah, you could hear that um, edge snap, and also you could hear me snap in the background. <laughs> I had to bleep that out, but uh, anyhow, we uh, got through it, and now I'm trying that Hertel insert, and I can tell you that that thing uh, did not perform. It just created a bunch of stringy chips, and probably no fault of its own. You know, I was not taking a heavy depth of cut or heavy enough feed. Uh, but still, it did, definitely did not break the chips as well as the, um, the Kenna metal insert. So I guess uh, the old saying goes, you get what you pay for. 20 or 30,000 feet. I'm going to get a wrap next here. I'm not getting near that. 
Let the machine deal with it. Can't tell if it's breaking the chip right now. I've got that big rat nest there. At this point, it should be getting better because we're starting to move in on the diameter. So the cutting fork and fire is going to drop. Right now it's stepping in and it's roughing. It's roughing that um, radius. Right now it's been machining almost an hour. Okay, at this point I've had enough of that Hertel insert. I'm reluctantly putting back in the expensive Kenna metal inserts, but um, it's the only one that's going to do the job, at least at least this time. And so I'm going to go ahead and put them back in. But again, because I'm moving in on a diameter, the torque required is going to drop. I should be able to increase my feed and, um, and depth of cut to get the chips to break. Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Breaking chips again this is good. My feeling is I should be able to continue this without the spindle faulting out because we're at a much smaller diameter now. So now we've got this thing dialed in and we're just going to cruise along. I've sped the video up again, so um, boy, it sure would have been nice. If it actually turned this fast, and I think on a lathe that had uh, more horsepower, it probably could have um, cranked up the feed rate quite a bit. Maybe not the RPM, because the RPM was, was actually correct for the insert uh, in, in the material. But uh, now we're going to go ahead and step rough this in to get that radius of the dome close. And then we're going to go in and do some um, nice camera work there, Dave. We're going to go in and do some uh, a rough finish, which is going to clean up the steps. And then they'll do a final finish pass, which will give us the final shape of the dome. And then we're about to do the rough finish. <laughs> and one of the things that um, was sort of strange to me was, is I left the 10 thousandths. Uh, radial cut for the finish pass and it the, the, the roughing actually uh, went a little bit deeper than I was expecting it to go and the finish pass did not actually clean it up I don't know if you can tell but you can still see there's witness marks from the actual roughing pass or, or yeah from, from the steps roughing passes so I went in and I ran another finish pass took another five thousandths off it, and then that cleaned it up. Yeah, you can see them there. It's very odd. I've never seen that before. I've always seen the um, roughing pass clean up, but uh, um, I thought 10,000 should be sufficient for um, for, for, for rough uh, to, to leave for finish. But um, anyhow, I go ahead and I do one more finish pass on this thing, and it cleans it up nicely, and we get a really nice surface finish. Um, super happy with the inserts. And I'm um, glad I spent the money. I'm looking at the even breaking chips right here, and we're taking a very light cut. So, uh, you know, hats off to Kenna Metal. They make um, definitely making nice inserts, and I'm going to be going that route in the future. So there it is. The final profile is done. Overall, I think the part came out pretty good, and uh, the road getting there was always, as always, was a little uh, tricky. It always is with these onesie twosies of sort of these odd parts, but uh, anyways, we did end up with a nice looking part. Got a little nubbin left over there. Tool wasn't exactly on center, nice but job. that's kind of typical. And there's the part. Uh, I think you see the backside, and uh, yeah, it's a finished unit. So uh, thank you for watching. If you liked, uh, please subscribe and press that like button, and hopefully I'll have some more videos coming out shortly.